Hello everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at creating a walk cycle for a character. And we're going to be using a technique, while might, it might not technically be rotoscoping, but it's going to be very close to this idea of rotoscoping. So what exactly is rotoscoping? Rotoscoping is taking uh, some video footage and using it as reference. And in, in essence, tracing over that reference uh, video to create the movement, in this case, for a character. So let's go ahead and get started. So the um, reference uh, video, or rather images in this case that we're going to be using, will be these images here of a walk cycle. It's a series of 12 images. And the way I'm going to bring these images into Maya is by picking one of my viewports here. In this case, I'm going to select the side viewport because the reference images are taken from the side. And I will go to View, Image Plane, Import Image. And I'll navigate to where I have these images. And I'm going to select the first image of this series of images. So it's a little bit difficult to see right now. I'm going to press F on my keyboard to zoom in on this image plane. You'll notice that I've created an image plane in here in my scene. That image plane is currently found right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it and maybe I'll just move it over a little to the right so that you can see it a little bit better. Now, you're probably already familiar with using image planes. You might have used image planes to model a 3D character, for example. Uh, image planes can be a very valuable tool for using as a template to help you define a three-dimensional form. Uh, with either drawings or photographs of the object or character that you are trying to 3D model. But in this case, we're using it for the movement to create a walk cycle. Now, currently, this image plane is only a single image. It is that first image of that series of 12 images. So if I hit the play button here in my, for my timeline, nothing changes. However, in the attribute, um, attribute editor, with my image plane selected, I can come over here to this checkbox that says Use Image Sequence. And if I select that and then hit play, you'll notice that we see two steps in this walk cycle. So now we have our uh, reference images here. We're seeing the series of uh, 12 images that we're going to use to help us create our walk cycle. Now, a couple things that we can do that I personally like to do because it makes it a little bit easier for me is that I actually break this connection here. There's this time node that is driving the uh, images frame by frame. And I actually like to break that because it's going to give me a little bit more flexibility regarding the timing of these images. So to break that connection, I'm going to take this image number, right click on it and say break connection. You'll notice that that in fact got rid of that time node here. Uh, and what this will allow us to do is to actually animate this field here. Right now, if I scrub in my timeline, nothing happens. However, if I right click on image number and say set key and then scrub to frame 12, because remember that there's actually 12 images here and I type 12 in this field and then key that we'll get something very similar to what we had before. 
This is still going to require a little bit more work, so let's dive in and see how we can work with this a little bit more to get it to be a little bit more uh, functional for us in terms of using it as reference for our animation. So, a couple things. First of all, I think that for a walk cycle, this is a little bit fast. We want to slow this down. So what I'm going to do is with my image plane selected, I'm going to go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and we can speed up the animation. Here's the animation where it's running through those frames. We can speed it up or we could slow it down. So in this case, we want to slow it down because we want the walk cycle to happen a little bit more slowly. So let's try this. We'll take this animation curve and we'll simply scale it. We'll make it take twice as long, for example. I'll select the animation curve here, go to Edit, Scale, and let's scale the time scale pivot by 2 and apply. Now that seems to have moved the animation curve one frame over to the right. I'll just drag that back. But now we'll have our reference images going all the way to frame 23 in this case. And that will be better because that's almost a second for two steps, which for a typical walk cycle, two steps can take about one second. Now, one other thing you may have noticed when I had the graph editor open for the image plane uh, is that we actually have a slow out and a slow in here. So what that means is that it is not playing those individual images at a constant rate, which is what we actually want. We want to eliminate this slow out and this slow in. So I'm going to with these, this animation curve selected, I'm going to go to this button here, which will create linear tangents. In other words, it'll make it go at a constant speed throughout its entire animation. And if we play it, it'll now play more slowly and it'll play it at a very constant rate. And that looks much more natural. Now, for the sake of what we're doing for this uh, example, we don't need to do the next step, but I'd like to show it to you anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this animation loop over and over and over again. So instead of just doing two steps and then stopping, it'll just keep on going. And to do that, I'll once again open up my graph editor. I still have my image plane selected and I'm going to, with my animation curve selected, go to Curves, found here, Curves, Pre-Infinity, and Post-Infinity. What we need actually is Post-Infinity, and what we can do is we can make this animation cycle over and over again. So I'll click on Cycle, and you'll see that it just simply is going to play the animation over and over and over again. When it gets to the end of this sequence of images, it'll instantly go back to the beginning of the sequence and play it again, play it again, play it again, and play it again. In fact, it'll just keep on playing it over and over and over again. And if we come over here and play this, then you'll see that that is, in fact, what it is doing. So I'm going to zoom out, and I think I'll take my image plane, and I'll just scale it up so that we can see it better relative to the size of our character here. And I could flip it so that it also faces uh, the direction of my character simply by scaling it. Go to my channel box. And I'll just make sure that I scale the X. I'm going to scale all of these 10 units, actually. 
keep it a nice easy number, and then I'll scale the negative x in a, sorry, the uh, scale x in a negative value to simply make this face the opposite direction. So there we go. Now we've got some good visual reference for creating a believable walk cycle for our character. Now, one of the reasons why I'm not calling this rotoscope, rotoscoping, but rather rotoscoping like, is because I'm not going to literally uh, trace the movement of our reference images that we have here. Uh, the reason being that that would really require that the proportions of my character be identical to the proportions of the reference images here. But uh, that could prove to be a little bit difficult. It might actually work with this. Maybe we could get something pretty close with uh, this image or with these uh, images that we have here in this character. But in fact, I'm gonna go through the process one more time of showing you how to set up these image planes and we're going to be using some slightly different uh, reference images, something that I think will be a little bit simpler for the sake of this example. Now, before I continue, I'd just like to say that this image or the series of images that we're looking at right now are by a photographer by the name of Edward Moybridge. And if you were to look up this uh, individual, uh, you'll find that there's a lot of uh, resources, a lot of information about him, an English photographer, uh, who created a, a bunch of these series, these series of uh, images, uh, in particular of animal and human movement. And these can prove to be a great resource for studying motion, uh, as well as for uh, using this rotoscoping technique. So in my next video, we'll take a look and we'll go through the process one more time of uh, creating an image plane and using video reference. And what we'll do is actually create a walk cycle using that reference. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.